This is an argument that's brought up all the time when arguing for eating meat. We eat meat all the time, so how could it be bad for us? We're meant to eat meat, right? Now I can go on and on about why it's bad for the environment, why it's bad for your health, and why it's morally bankrupt to eat meat. But today we're gonna to stick with why it is so easy to show that we are herbivores and not meant to eat meat. According to biologists and anthropologists who study our anatomy and our evolutionary history, humans are herbivores who are not well suited to eating meat. Humans lack both the physical characteristics of carnivores and the instinct that drives them to kill animals and devour their raw carcasses. Dr. T. Colin Campbell, professor at Cornell University and author of The China Study, explains that in fact we only recently began eating meat and that the inclusion of meat in our diet came well after we became who we are today. Dr. Neil Bernard says in his book, The Power of Your Plate, early humans had diets very much like other great apes, which is to say a largely plant-based diet, drawing on foods we can pick up with our hands. Research suggests that eating meat came about by scavenging, eating the leftovers that carnivores had left behind. However, our bodies have never adapted to it. To this day, meat eaters have higher rates of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and so many other diseases and illnesses. Paleontologist Dr. Richard Leakey explains that you can't tear flesh by hand, you can't tear hide by hand. We wouldn't have been able to deal with the food source that required those large canines. So I made a chart here to lay out the differences between carnivores, omnivores, herbivores, and humans. We'll go in order from actually catching the prey to the digestive process. Remember, a true omnivore would have a body optimized for eating plants and animals. With non-humans, we can look at what they eat in the wild to figure out their preferred diets. But with humans, we've lost our instincts so long ago that we can only look at our anatomy and digestive systems, and that evidence is compelling. So let's start off with the nails. Carnivores and omnivores both have sharp claws. Herbivores have flattened nails, and of course, so do humans. Now let's look at the jaw motion. Carnivores and omnivores have a shearing motion and they have minimal side to side movement. Humans and other herbivores can move their jaws up and down and from side to side, allowing them to grind up fruit and vegetables with their back teeth. Like other herbivores teeth, humans back molars are flat for grinding fibrous plant foods. Carnivores lack these flat molars. Now let's move on to the teeth. So first up, we'll start off with the incisors. Of course, carnivores and omnivores have short and pointed incisors, whereas herbivores are broad and flattened, and of course, humans are broad and flattened as well. Then we jump to the canines, which are long, sharp, and curved on carnivores and omnivores. For herbivores, they're dull and short or long, or sometimes they have none at all. For humans, we have short and blunted canines. Finally, for the teeth, we have the molars. So for a carnivore or omnivore, they're going to be sharp and blade-shaped. Sometimes they can be flattened on omnivores, but mostly they're going to be sharp, blade-shaped. For herbivores, they're going to be flattened, and for us humans, they're also flattened. Now, one thing a lot of people don't think about is the saliva. For a carnivore or omnivore, they have no digestive enzymes in their saliva. Whereas herbivores and us humans, we have carbohydrate digestive enzymes. This helps break down all those fibrous carbohydrates. Now let's look at the chewing or lack thereof because a carnivore doesn't really chew at all. It swallows its food whole. Omnivores almost always do the same thing. Sometimes they do some simple crushing. Whereas herbivores and us humans, we have extensive chewing that is necessary in order to swallow our foods. Now, one of the big reasons for this is that a carnivore's stomach acidity is so different than ours. Carnivores swallow their food whole, relying on their extremely acidic stomach juices to break down flesh and kill the dangerous bacteria in meat that would otherwise sicken or kill them. Our stomach acid as humans and other herbivores, our stomach acids are much weaker in comparison because stronger acids aren't needed to digest pre-chewed fruits and vegetables. Then we jump to the liver. In a carnivore or an omnivore, they can actually detoxify vitamin A, whereas herbivores and us as humans cannot detoxify vitamin A, which is found heavily in meat and dairy products. Now let's get to one of the most obvious things that is a really clear indicator of why we are herbivores. Let's look at the length of the small intestine. On a carnivore, it's three to six times our body length. On an omnivore, it's four to six times our body length. But on an herbivore, and humans, it's 10 to 12 times the body length. And then we look at the colon. On a carnivore, it is simple, short, and smooth. And it's the same thing for omnivores. Whereas for us humans and for herbivores, it's long and complex. 
Carnivores have shortened intestinal tracts and colons that allow meat to pass through the animal relatively quickly before it can rot and cause illness. Humans' intestinal tracts are much longer than those of carnivores of comparable size. Longer intestines allow the body more time to break down fiber and absorb the nutrients from plant-based foods, but they do make it dangerous for humans to eat meat. The bacteria in meat have extra time to multiply during the long trip through the digestive system, increasing the risk of food poisoning. Meat actually begins to rot while it makes its way through the human intestines, which increases the risk of colon cancer and a ton of other problems. Think about the idea of the food that you're eating is able to rot inside of your body before you can pass it. That is incredibly disgusting for most of us and hopefully very eye-opening for a lot of people out there. If these obvious signs of our herbivore nature aren't enough for you, let's look at how meat actually hurts humans. Among animals, plant eaters have the longest lifespans and humans are certainly in that category. Atherosclerosis, which is plaque buildup in the arterial walls, only affects herbivores. Dogs, cats, tigers, and lions can be saturated with fat and cholesterol, and atherosclerotic plaques do not develop. But if we already eat meat, doesn't that mean that we are omnivores? Absolutely not. All you have to do is apply the same logic to, let's say, a cat. Cats eat in their cat food, they eat wheat, corn, the rice, all these other different nutrients that are not meat-based. Does that mean that a cat is an omnivore? Definitely not. Between 95 and 99% of a chimp's diet is plant-based. That means they occasionally will eat bugs and termites and things like that, but they are still true herbivores. Remember, you shouldn't be looking at the food that we used to eat or the food that we eat now as a guideline for what we are supposed to eat. All you should look at is what our bodies are meant to consume. Humans simply don't have the anatomical tools that actual carnivores and omnivores possess. As Gary Yarofsky has said many times, if you take a child, put them in a room with a bunny and an apple, which one do they eat and which one do they play with? The scientific journals are filled with articles that come to the same conclusion. The more plants you eat, the healthier you'll be. The more meat and dairy you consume, the more illness you will have. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Shut down.